I think you can go ahead. Okay, so I'm gonna start then. Um, my name is Veronica and I am currently studying international business management at Prague College. I am right now in my last semester and I am from Czech Republic, from Prague, but currently I'm actually in Oman and I will tell you a quick story how that happened. So um, we actually have a business, um, family business in here. We invested in a few apartments in here and we were planning to rent them for people when they come for vacations here. So in March, they, the apartments got finished and we came here just to furnish them and for two weeks. And after that, two days before the flight back, everything got canceled, the airports got closed and they told us that we just have to wait until everything will be solved. <laughs> so we've been like, okay, that's good. So we can just have two, three more weeks of vacation and then we get back. Well, right now it's eight months and we are still here. <laughs> but uh, anyway, now I get to the point that actually, I don't know what I would do if there would be like no digital campus or no online learning through Prague College because um, I don't know if I would have to postpone my studies or just like, I don't know, I don't know how else I would solve it. So I'm really glad that Prague College actually started those, uh, this digital campus and online learning and actually it provides me i think the proper education like if i would be there present in the physical classes also about the digital campus i'm i would even appreciate it much longer before like uh, it would be really useful because for example last year uh, i was going to the italy to rome for uh, to learn italian for some courses and actually uh, because we had those physical classes at Prague every week I had to come back for two weeks to Prague and then back to Rome and so on so if we would already have digital campus before I would like uh, save a lot of money and a lot of time so it's definitely good for traveling if we will be able to do that in future this digital campus would be really cool and also I really enjoy just this comfort of staying at home and learning from home because to be honest in the past when there were those winter months at Prague and it was so cold and dark and depressing and even I felt bad or sick or something I still had to go there physically and that was the last thing I wanted to do so <laughs> it's good that right now actually we can do everything from home and also I feel that right now actually all the world and all the business is really heading to the online business, online communication. So this kind of uh, thing, this digital campus, digital learning is preparing us a lot for, for the future like that. And other thing is, which I like really much is that all the classes are recorded because in past, I remember many times I was in the class, I was taking notes and I missed so, so many points or I missed so many discussions because I was just, I couldn't delegate between all of it. And right now in the on online classes, I can just uh, join the discussion and not worry about much, not worry much about the notes. And I can just like focus what's happening there. And later on, I can look at the recorded classes, which is really also useful because uh, when you have those assignments where the due date is like in two or three months, you really forget what you have been talking about in the beginning. And it's really useful to get back to it after. And the last thing I would like to mention is that I was actually in the beginning really uh, not feeling really good about how it's gonna be all this online communication because it felt to me a little bit cold and so on. And I was thinking that maybe I will not get any friends anymore from Prague College and so on, because before we all spent time physically there together and after even we went for a restaurant or we just been spending time together. And so I was really curious how it's going to be. And surprisingly, it's actually nice because uh, even though it's online and you see the people just on the screen, I still kind of you can still feel the energy, you can still communicate with them and also, we have those um, group, um, for example, group presentations or group um, projects and so on, where we just closely 
have a Zoom meeting with few people and I think I got to know them a little bit more like that. And after we actually even became friends and we are even chatting in private messages like on uh, Instagram or WhatsApp. And I believe that when I will be back in Prague, I will be even, uh, I will be happy to meet them and it will be all nice. And yeah, also one more last thing I wanted to say is that uh, a lot of people are thinking that you cannot actually maybe really focus when it's online like this. But for me, I actually feel like the focus is more concentrated when you are you have no distractions around you. You just get your headphones and you really watch the uh, lecture speaking and so on. So for me, I think I focus even better than before in the class where there were so many distractions and I was even tired or whatever. So yeah, that's from my side, my experience with the digital campus. Yeah, I would have to agree on all of your points. Like I agree completely. Like I came into this with such bad expectations, but with all the parties and everything that Pro College organizes, you really feel connected. But yeah, uh, hi everyone. My, I'm Tam Tao and I'm studying graphic design. I just started and I have never even been to Prague. So I'm learning digitally. I'm just waiting for um, my visa to be printed because printed has stopped because all the COVID situation and everything. And I'm just uh, at home in Georgia studying. And yeah, experience has been very good, as good as it can be on a digital campus. And I really enjoy it. Hi, um, my name is Mirna and I am currently in Prague, although I come from uh, Bosnia. I'm a freshman, so I just started this year and I came to Prague with the beginning of the semester. So this has been my first college experience ever. But uh, even regarding the circumstance, it's been very nice because all, all of the staff and the teachers and other students have been very com uh, communicative and they've uh, actually been very keen on making this a positive experience even with all the restrictions and not being able to see each other or communicate or actually be in, an, in a normal environment the way we're used to but the digital campus is very helpful and uh, one of the good things I think about it was that it started almost immediately they didn't have a lot of problems with it they knew how to do it it was already well organized and it functions completely okay uh, the lectures are recorded, recorded, which is helpful, and the teachers are very uh, approachable. For the students who are in Prague, they offer sometimes in-person meetings. If, if they need some extra help, I can say that for my program. I don't know about others, but I'm sure it's very similar. And even for the students who aren't in Prague, they still offer one-on-one -on -one, uh, Zoom classes. So uh, the staff is very nice and I think the whole college has tried to make this experience in this environment and these conditions as pleasant as possible. And the student clubs are functioning as always just through Zoom. So everything that was organized before is still going on just in a little bit different way, in a more different way. And that's about it. But I can definitely say that everybody's trying their hardest to make this as good as possible and just kind of wait it out until things kind of get back to normal or get better. Yeah, I, I mean, I completely agree. I think um, one of the benefits uh, for like that Pro College has is that because we're such a small university, we, the teachers, uh, we're in a, we're basically we we got the privilege of having you know uh, very much like a event. Teachers are having an individual approach with their students in their classes, and we can have one-on-one -on -one meetings with them. And even even now, uh, for my subject that I study, which is uh, creative media production, that's the program I'm in, and I'm currently in my first year. Um, I really noticed that even for our, some of our classes, we got even uh, we're split into smaller groups. That way uh, the teachers are able to really focus on, you know, uh, each student uh, really intensely and, intensely and uh, give them all, their, uh, all the time that they got. And I think this way we're able to get the maximum from our classes as if we were on the campus. And I think that's extremely good. And I think Pro College really does a great job in, uh, with that. Um, 
I, I mean, it's interesting because again, yeah, I'm also a freshman, so I have not been to the actual campus. So it's really interesting. Um, I'm kind of getting used to it. It's, it's, it's interesting how like a year ago, we would not think that this was gonna happen. And we're now making it like the new norm. We're completely like, we're almost normalizing it. I think it will be weird to go outside and see people not wearing masks at all, or, you know, not even having online school. But I think the benefit is to totally like, you know, as Veronica said, like having recordings of it. So then when you actually have the class, you can engage more in the discussions, which we really do have in our subject as well. Um, and then just, you know, if you need to take more detailed notes, watch it later. And even the benefit of having hybrid classes in the future, which Pro College offers, uh, where you or the students that are in the class, you know, are in the class, but it's also recorded and um, uh, broadcasted, you know, through Zoom. I think it's a great thing if someone, you know, is just sick or missing out, we can uh, have this opportunity to have hybrid classes and not miss out on any classwork or anything. So I'm really, really happy about it. And oh yeah, by the way, my name is Caroline and uh, I'm from the Czech Republic. But yeah, that's what I would like to say about my experience so far at Prague College. Yeah, also Caroline, as you've been saying that we are usually like uh, studying in small, classes and we have like only a small amount of people there that's all, all, always been in at Prague College like that and it was really good I was before at another college which was like uh, it was a public university and there were like hundreds of people and I actually didn't get any value from that like this really at Prague College they really pay attention to get this one-on-one -on -one experience and to really focus on you and you really engage with all the people and all the lectures so yeah that that was already before even the digital campus and it's until today and I value it a lot and it gave me much more than on the previous uni university I've been before so yeah I just wanted to add that oh wow we got a question coming up uh what is it like to study in a multicultural environment does anyone want to answer it uh how do you guys actually feel it online like this do you do you actually feel this multicultural environment because maybe you more felt it you would more feel it if you would be physically there what right. do you think i mean I, I say from my experience i really became uh good friends with one of my classmates and she's from dubai and it was really interesting to you know get to really become friends even just digitally with someone who is from the other you know side of the world and get to hear about their culture and their experience and uh, things like that. So I think one of the benefits of going to an international university is that that you are really um, you get so much insight into different cultures, and I think that really uh, makes you like you know richer in your uh, knowledge and experience. Um, and I think I, I think it's a, I think it's a great thing. I, I mean, uh, so far Veronica is one of the very few people that I know that are from the Czech Republic in our university because we have people from all over the world and I think that's just such a great experience. Exactly as you're saying like I had classmates from everywhere in the world and I got to know so much about all those cultures and countries I even traveled sometimes to see my classmates in other countries and really it's great experience and it gives you so much so really really good to work in multicultural environment <laughs> do we have another question <laughs> also i would add that um uh, because we're foreigners and we're going to a multicultural environment you feel very included because if you went to another country and you are the only foreigner you wouldn't feel that included and i think that's a very important point yeah that's true so there's been another question uh, could you please tell us a little bit more about a project that you have worked on and you have liked in particular? So does anyone here have any projects they've already done? Oh, yeah, like me personally, we've done so many of projects, of course, because I'm in my last uh, semester of master's. But for example, currently we are working on two presentations with, uh, with small groups. And I really enjoy that process. Like we always have like Zoom meetings and we discuss all the ideas and do the brainstorming and so on. And what we put together is really cool. Like I would never uh, be able to put this together just by myself. So it brings me a lot of value and a lot of new knowledge. 
so yeah, I enjoy, for example, doing those group presentations with another classmates. What about you? What what projects did you do? Well, I'm very new, but I have, I've actually just become part of a new project as well. It's a student magazine and we'll see how that goes since it's still in the in its developing stages. But yeah, I mean, I'm uh, also taking part in the student magazine and I think it's really excited to see it come to life because uh, so far, um, you know, it's it's at the beginning uh, of like the it's, 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 it's at its begin, beginning, but it's nice to be there all the way from the start to see how things evolve and just be part of it. For my like uh, subjects, we're currently working on some group projects that we're gonna be assessed on, but uh, we still haven't like actually finished it or presented it. But I think it's interesting, like in a way you're challenged to, um, you know, work in a group project while you know social distancing it's like it's it's almost like a paradox it's like group project social distancing um but you know i think especially like gen z people i think we are uh you know we we know how to work uh with uh media and like communications and all these things that of course we i mean it's amazing the fact that we even have the privilege to be able to have plat like you know the the internet and platforms to call on and talk to people and I think it is in a way a challenge to be able to collaborate together on a project from different places. Uh, for example, oh, actually we did have a one project that we already presented and my friend and I, uh, we were working together and she's the one all the way from Dubai. We had to make like a little three minute film and it was challenging because we had to, you know, use her shots for the film, my shots for the film. We had to have an equal part in it while one person was able to only edit it from their device because you know if you use final cut Pro or anything you cannot really do it at the same time from two places um it was it was a challenge but i think it also was really enlightening and um it was fun so it has its perks surely some disadvantages as well but um i think also our teachers are very respectful and aware of how you know, like what the what challenges are in this process, and uh, they always try to do their best to help us out and give us all the resources uh, they they have to give us. Mm -hmm. What about you, Tamta? There's another question, by the way. Um, it's how many and uh, how many in class hours do you have? Does anyone want to answer that? How do they mean and how many in class hours do we, we have? I wonder if they just mean like how many classes a week or? Yeah, I yeah. think and how long they last. Okay. Well, I think it usually is two hours for one class, right? And sometimes you have several classes in a row during the day, especially in the first semesters. It usually goes like three classes in a row, two hours. How, how do you guys have it? Even now in masters, I have a little bit less classes than we had in the beginning, but um, I'm curious how you have it guys now in the, in the first mm -hmm. semester. Well, uh, I, I don't know if I said it already, but I'm in computer science at Prague College. I'm in the School of Media and IT, and we have five cl classes. Two of them are not mandatory, but they're like soft skills and academic introduction just to help us with the other classes. Each class lasts two hours and it's approximately two classes a day. But if they squeeze in three classes in a day, then you have one class another day. So it's like that, but it's not too much. And you have a lot of time during the day to work on whatever homework you have or projects. It's not overwhelming at all. Well, I'm noticing uh, that each person has different schedules. I wonder what Tamta, like how, how does she have it? Yeah, I, I have a schedule, but it's not changing. Like, it's like mandatory every week. And I have 19 hours exactly, like every week. Wow, okay, wow. Because I was trying to count mine. I got uh, always, there's only, there's only one day in a week where I have two different classes uh, after each other. So basically four hours um, at, right after each other because one lecture takes two hours. And so in a week I have a maximum of 14 hours. Um, for uh, each semester, we have three su uh, free subjects, and we have to take all of them. Um, and in creative media production, 
for my first semester right now, we got visual storytelling, uh, media and cultural theory, and um, writing narrative plot and character. And for basically, we got always um, two classes a week for each of those subjects. And, um, but really every day I have like today, for example, I had one class and it was only two hours and tomorrow I'm having another one, but I don't have multiple classes after each other in, in one day. And what is actually the timing of those classes? Because I remember in bachelor and HND usually wasn't from the morning till a little bit of afternoon. And for example, in masters right now, we are having it around six, seven o'clock in the evening. Wow, okay. Well, we always have like, either uh, some of our classes are from nine to 11 and then others are from 10 to 12. And then on Fridays, that's when we have like multiple classes after each other. That's the only day, which is Friday. It's like, you know, you wish that Fridays were the ones where you have the days off, but in a way it's like, it, it's not a big deal. It's fine. Um, but on Fridays, um, I end the latest, which is 2 p.m. Mm -hmm. Actually, the latest I have is till 5 p.m. and it's into it's it has I have it two times a week. Okay, okay. We got another question. Oh, we got two. Okay, so let's go with the first one. Have you joined any of the lecture series or parties? Oh wow, I yeah I have. I don't know if you have, but for the Halloween there was like no, no it was for the Halloween. I have not joined that one, but there was like a welcome kind of party um i don't know if that's exactly how it was called but there was one at the like somewhere mid of october i think that was really really fun uh so many people joined and i think even some of the teachers joined which was kind of interesting because it was fun to have a chill talk you know with them and we were separated also into breakout rooms uh we could we could choose which breakout rooms we want to go to based on what we want to do i know now there's a very trendy day game called among us so if people wanted to play among us they would go into the breakout room called among us or if they just want to play never have i ever then they would go to never have i ever a uh, breakout room so it's interesting how creative uh the school and the people who organized it were with making sure that we really are able to do so many things on like a party, digital party. Um, so that was that was a really fun experience. I don't know if uh, you guys went to the Halloween one. Well, me personally, I didn't experience any even this semester, especially because of the time difference and so on, or just I didn't get to it. But now that I hear how it is, I'm sure I will join another one, the next one. It was really fun. <laughs> yeah. I joined both parties, like the welcome party and the Halloween, and Halloween had the same format, like uh, we had breakout rooms and everything, and like on welcome party, there are so many musicians that will listen to, it, which was very nice, and on the Halloween party, there was a DJ, which was also very nice, so yeah, we had breakout rooms and everything, we're just talking, it was nice. What also, we had a costume room? contest. What do you mean by that? What? The breakout room, what does it mean? Oh, on Zoom, you basically have the opportunity to be, it's usually what the professors do uh, to separate you into, like, if you have to discuss something in smaller groups, they will assign you to breakout rooms. Okay. So kind of like in physical world, you would have like this group of people talking in the circle about specific yes. topics. In like yeah. a little table and then another table. So basically okay. that's how it is. But the digital. digital experience of that. Okay. I need to learn new things about that. Yeah. Oh, okay, another question. How were they run in the digital campus? Okay, so that was related to what, uh, yes. what yeah, we mentioned that. How are your classes assessed? Do you have a lot of exams? Um, I wanna hear your guys' experience from different programs because I honestly am curious. Okay, oh. can, can I start? Because yeah. I have uh, two, two tests at the end of the semester. One is before the winter break and one is after it. Uh, they're like the final exams, ICAs. Uh, they're graded uh, uh, individually, but they all come sum up to the same grade. But one has uh, more value than the other, the last one, I think. And they're mostly written assignments. But the first one, the first ICAs are tests. But some teachers don't do tests. I think one just gave us a written assignment. So I think it depends on the class you have because different classes have different approaches. We can't write a test in a certain subject. So we just get an assignment. But, and 
uh, the timetable for it. It's usually in the 10th week of the first semester, the first ICAs, but the teachers can be very um, considerate towards our schedules. And if they get too crowded, they'll just schedule a test. So we don't have uh, a lot of them in the same day. Some even uh, consider not having them in the same week. Wow, okay. Yeah, for, for me, um, we also have it like in the 10th week or something. And uh, we also call them, I mean, I think it's just ICs in general. But for the program that I study, because it's so focused on like film studies and visual things, we, we also work on like group projects that we do collaboratively, but then we're assessed individually. So it's, I think, also a great skill to be able to, first of all, present um, you know, in front of a class, whether it's, you know, now through Zoom or even in person, but also, you know, and make sure that you don't drag your group down by your own performance, though you're going to be them graded individually. Like, of course, you know, it's a, it's a great skill to, you know, be able to work well in a team um, and yet, yet at the same time work for yourself because you're going to be graded, you know, for your own work. Um, so for one of our classes, we have a presentation. Um, then for another one, we have an essay. Um, for another one, we have a short film to make. So it's like a diversity of all things. I think it's like a best of all worlds kind of thing, but that's for, for the subject, for the, for the program that I study. Yeah, exactly. I have it or I had it in past very similar. Usually it was um, reports or presentations or essays or some group work. And there were actually not many tests during all my studies. I guess in total, we did like three, maximum four tests. And I actually like that because I think that everybody just studies for the test and then forgets everything. But at Prague College, with those reports and presentation, you actually have to put your creative energy in and like to collaborate together. And I think you will even remember much more from it and you will get more experience with that. So um, usually, as you're saying, in half of the semester, there are um, some reports to write. And then in the end, there are again, like presentations or reports or something. So kind of you have three months for uh, one part of the assignments and the other half also again for some assignments. So yeah. Something like that. It it was yes. I mean, I, I think it's uh I think the with what what you said about the tests, I completely agree with because we don't get like a we didn't get so far any exam. But and I mean, although of course it's important to check on your knowledge and your skills, what we really have in our classes, which I really appreciate, is that we have discussions about things. We have one subject that is very theory based. So while we, of course, have to, you know, make take notes and all these things, we also are able to talk about things and how we approach it and how we see it. Because, I mean, our uh, one of the subjects, which is called media and cultural theory, is also based a lot on like philosophy and different theorists and their frameworks. We're able to discuss it and apply it to real life situations um, and how and its impact on media, because I mean, that's what I study in my case. So I'm really grateful for that because it also enables you to have good um, speaking skills, if that makes sense. You know, not only writing things down on paper, but also being able to execute it and support your argument if you have some kind of statement to say in a confident way. Okay, we got yeah. another question. Uh, wait, I got confused. Okay, are there any opportunities for real projects and not only work that is for school assignments? Does anyone want to answer that question? Well, me personally, um, I didn't use any of those opportunities yet, but I know that we have a lot of um, those like events once in semester or uh, something like that, where the companies like come to the school and they offer you a job and um, in the specific areas and so on. So. Uh, actually, I think a lot of companies are actually interested to get people from Prague College because, as we were saying, like at Prague College, people are really creative. They um, are experienced in like working with the real life situations, communicating with each other, doing presentations and so 
so on, because um, in another universities, they usually just like memorize things, do tests and so on. So a lot of companies actually, from what I remember, go for to Prague College to get uh, some talents. So for sure, also there is a lot of opportunity to work on real projects, not just school assignments. I think one of the benefits that we have for um, regarding Student Magazine is that, I mean, though it still goes under, you know, pro college, we are a lot, like we have a lot of freedom to be um, independent and really uh, ex express um, what we want to, you know, like show uh, in this magazine. Um, so we're actually, I don't know, I can spoil this, but uh, one like part of the Student Magazine is also going to be a podcast, which I think is really great because um, it's, it's something that though still is kind of under the pro college brand, like, you know, branch, uh, it's still something that, you know, you can um, extend further uh, and it doesn't have to do anything with your studies. It can just be something that you wanna um, just extend um, and do, you know, further, um, even for example, after quitting uh, studies at pro college. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I also have for my class, uh, because we have a lot of subjects that, that need to be implemented in real life, but a lot of theory that ha needs to have some results. Um, some of our ICAs at the end of the semester are projects, which we have to, for instance, right now we're, we're ha we have programming fundamentals. And for the last ICA, we have to write a program that does this, this and that, so, but it's a project that implements, in which we implement our knowledge. And for instance, in the second semester, we're gonna be doing algorithms or something like that. And then again, we're gonna have to write a program which implements those algorithms. So it's it's very practical, That that's a big thing. Yeah, um, actually, I think there's a question for you, Mirna. It's about what is it like to be relocated to Prague and then study online? <laughs> Oh, okay, yeah, well, it was a bummer, kind of, uh, to be honest, but uh, I think what most people have a problem with when moving away or anywhere is the kind of the nostalgia that kicks in, but the college offers a lot of people you can talk to, they told us in the orientation session we had, so if you ever f have a need to talk to somebody, the college is always available and they have special people for that, uh, but for me personally, it wasn't that bad. I mean, I was kind of waiting to move away from home because I was supposed to do this uh, year abroad, but things kind of got canceled because of um, some things. So I wasn't, so I was kind of excited to go away, but I'm in a dorm right now because I was waiting to kind of get settled in before I look for an apartment just to kind of know, uh, get to know my way around. So I met a couple of people there. I, I made some friends, I made some friends from Prague College, which are from different schools, like the School of Business and so on. Plus, uh, I, made a, um, I met a lot of different people, so it's never been boring. I don't have a problem with it, but I think it all comes down to your personal preferences. But regarding the online school, it functions completely okay. I feel it's a benefit to be able to get in touch with some of the teachers in real life, although I haven't actually used it, but you know, there's still the options. So there is some benefits to being in Prague. I'm just kind of okay with it. Nothing special would have been better, but you know, it, it is the way it is. So yeah, that's it. Yeah. Okay, there's another one. Ha, uh... Have you have your programs been what you expected them to be through your digital campus? Um, I mean, from my experience, um, I, I I when I I mean when I was applying to Prague College and I was looking at what the what the course offers, um, I was extremely excited about it. I was you know thinking of between other schools, uh, other universities in Prague. Because I, I I had it settled that I would I don't want to um, study abroad for my uh, bachelor bachelor's degree, but when I saw what Prague College uh, had to offer for creative media production, I was extremely excited for it. So I had high expectations uh, from this course, and it definitely did not disappoint. Uh, whether I mean it's the actual content of what we study 
or the teachers, I'm extremely, extremely satisfied. Um, so that's from my experience. What about you, Tamta? Uh, well, this is uh, like in the beginning, I didn't expect this because I had this preconception that in college there were lectures and it was very like, like uh, lecturers telling you stuff and you're taking notes. But uh, what I discovered was that it's more like a classroom, which reminds me of my high school, which is, is in the best way because uh, yeah, it's like it's it's like we're in a class classroom where it's more interactive and everything, and uh, small class sizes as you mentioned, like others. And I really uh, I was happy because yeah I didn't have many expectations and in terms of what I'm studying I really enjoy it. So I would say yeah I'm I'm happy and my expectations maybe were not met because my expectations were lower, <laughs> maybe but yeah. That was, that was it. Another question, how do you find the independent study? Is it difficult to balance studying and being Um. Well, is it difficult to balance studying and being at home? I think you have to kind of, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big uh, question of like self-discipline. You know, I don't personally, when I, you know, have to take my classes. Um, of course, there the temptation of, you know, just wearing your uh, like PJs is big and you just want to be as, as comfortable as possible. And in a way there is its own advantage to it. But at the same time, I think to really be motivated and ready to like be in the like school mode, I, I really try to do my best to, um, you know, sit by the table and write things down and address myself as if, not like as if I would go to a you know campus, but just differently than if I would just chill um, at home. So I think it's really a question of self-discipline and uh, being a bit strict with yourself in a way, or at least for me, because I can become a very easy like procrastinator or just lazy person when it comes to things like this. Uh, so that's for my experience. Yeah, for me, I find it actually really good. I like that we can actually stay at home and so on. Like for me, it's also, as you've been saying, I also try to make myself, like prepare myself, like I'm going to actually to the school. So I dress myself, I put makeup and so on. I put my notes everywhere, books, and I'm ready with everything. So that makes you feel a little bit like you are in the class and just with the comfort of that, you don't have to go actually anywhere and you can just like stay home. So for me, it's it's great. I agree. I mean, at the same time, the environment that you're in makes a huge impact on how you feel. And so of course, being in a comfortable place, if you feel comfortable where you, you know, are where you live, uh, obviously will have a positive impact on um, your even focusing, you know, like you being able to focus or just enjoying the classes. So I think, you know, it's nice to just wake up and make yourself coffee at home and, just have like a slow start to, to your day. Um, but also that, that's the great thing that I love about my classes is that I have always classes in the morning. So in a way, I already in the morning right away get into the working school mode. And it's not like, you know, I wake up at 11 a.m. and then have class at like 5 p.m. And in the meantime, I do nothing. I think to have classes early in the morning, for me, I'm extremely grateful for it because it kind of pushes me to really like, you know, get things done. And so I think, I think, it, I think it's a great experience. It's interesting. Of course, it's not the same as if you went to, a, to like a regular school campus, but it, it definitely has its comfort. And also the fact that you are actually showing your face and you have to interact with people that makes you focused. You still have to be present and so on. It's a little bit same, like when you are there and yeah, it's, it's like that. I think you, you can get focused actually, even when you are at home especially when you when you show your face and so on you cannot just not respond or something yeah and in my opinion it's even easier to balance studying and being at home than it would be like being in Prague and physically going to the school because like because I'm home there's so much more time I don't have to uh 
like and I, I like prepare to really get out because you don't really spend that much time and you don't need to uh, spend time on like uh, commute like on the bus train like walking everything which is also nice but like now I think I have more time than I would have when I was if I were physically going so there's like more time is easier balancing I think <laughs> yeah I mean, I, I think, I mean, uh, I don't know, uh, for in Prague, the lockdown, the first lockdown started in, in March of last year, I mean, not last year, last school year, so like, you know, uh, March 2020, and so it, it already started when I was doing my, it was when I was supposed to do my, you know, high school exams, and it was really interesting, I think back then it was very odd, and also, sitting in front of a computer for, you know, your lectures would be extremely exhausting. I think now we've, I think our bodies got a bit more used to it, but of course it's still not extremely healthy to just sit in front of the computer for too many hours a day, whether it's having classes or watching Netflix um, or really, you know, anything else. Like, I think, like, I, I try to do my best to still be active and go for a run or something like that, so. Yeah, I think maybe the upside of this whole online classes thing is that you have more control of how you spend your time because exactly what Tomta said you don't have to waste a lot of time getting ready going there coming back and there's always you know going for coffee after school mm -hmm. and things like that so when you have online classes it's just you with your time and it kind of it depends on your work ethic and what you choose to do with it. Exactly. I think what is what really shocked me, though, and what really impressed me was because, you know, when we had uh, like uh, di like uh, digital learning in my other school, I was kind of OK with it because I already knew all my classmates. You know, I've been at school with them like uh, in person for so long. So but here I went to my first year and I did not know anyone. And I was like, OK, this is going to be so strange to like be make friends, make complete like make new friends with completely random people that you've never met and make, make like become friends on screen kind of thing you know like that's so that was such a weird experience especially because I mean uh for us first semester started at the end of September which was like you know one week before one week after um you know social uh learning I mean distance learning was like announced and at least in the Czech Republic um but I'm extremely impressed by how I made so many friends so quickly, even just by calling with them after classes. There's, there, I have numerous friends in my in my uh, in my classes that were just like, you know, let's let's call on Zoom even after our class and talk about, you know, whether it's the con like what we talked about in the lesson and elaborate on it further, or just talk about anything else. So, I think that's very exciting. And you know, if one day we're gonna be grandmas and uh, we can tell our grandkids about it and say how it was back in the days um because hopefully we won't experience a pandemic like this in the future again yeah. exactly especially in those like group projects you do you get to know people so well not probably much during the normal class when the uh, lecture is mostly speaking but especially i found or i got much closer with several of my classmates during those projects so that's also the benefit of doing groups projects here Okay, so there's another question. Is it challenging to meet other students? Do you have any specific ways that you talk to your friends outside of class? Well, I kind of already started talking about it, which I said, I haven't met anyone, even if they were in Prague already. I know uh, one of my classmates is in Prague already. Um, he's from Ukraine. Um, so, but I have not met with any of, the, of those people. And yeah, as I said, I would talk to, uh, to the rest of my friends uh, through Zoom or just message them. We have group chats for our classes, which is nice because you feel like you're not all alone on this. And mm -hmm. even though I feel like uh, the, the workload that we have, we, I'm, I'm managing it well. Uh, I mean, that's also a question of time management and work ethic, as Myrna said, but like still, you know, sometimes you can be overwhelmed in your classes with, with the amount of work that you got and assignments. But when you, and it can then be extremely, uh, exhausting to and overwhelming to feel like you're all alone on this like having group chats and stuff for your classes and for your projects is so nice because you realize like 
hey, we're actually all in this together. And we, if we need, we can help each other out. And that's extremely valuable, something that I really try to cherish as much as I can. Well, I think there are uh, several specific ways how we meet other students. Like, first of all, like in our classes, like it's very easy to meet our sort of classmates because of all the group projects that you mentioned. And other ways I think will be like on the like digital parties, we like exchanged Instagrams and that's how you can communicate and meet people around from other um, other like classes and other schools like and everything and that's also a way to meet other people and also um, like the this different groups like if you join like this event magazine that you mentioned like that's you meet people from there too and also there's a music society for example that I joined and I met people like that and also there's many kind of groups and associations that you can join and meet other people so I don't think it's challenging at all if you want to meet other people it's just very easy yeah Okay, another one. For those of you who have just started studying, what is it like to study in, uh, uh, all in English online? Well, from my experience, I went to an international high school so for six years. So for me being in a, first of all, multicultural environment was already uh, something that I, was, um, I, I, I felt comfortable in and something that was not new to me. Um, and studying in like all classes in English was also not a new thing to me because I'm bilingual. I, and I speak both Czech and English. I, 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 I feel completely comfortable, but I do not know for how to, I know that Mirna is from Bosnia. I wonder how it is for you. If, did you have English classes before? Yeah, I had English classes. I mean, I, um, but I've had, you know, uh, English knowledge of English before, because I went to these courses as a kid, and I went to two elementary schools, one was in English. So, uh, but I think to get into Prague College, you need to have a certain certificate of a, of a certain level of knowledge of English. So it has to be, I think, B2 or C or something. But I think, um, since there's a lot of people from all around the world who haven't had the opportunities to speak English as much, uh, the teachers are very considerate towards it and they'll always repeat something if somebody doesn't hear it or understand it. Uh, if so uh, somebody says something that somebody doesn't understand, they'll just rephrase it as, and it's not actually a big deal at all. And the tempo of the classes isn't too fast. So, I mean, for me and for the people I know, it hasn't been a problem. Yeah. Well, for me personally, actually, when I started before, I didn't have much of a background in English. I was studying German much more. So I just knew this basic English from movies and series and so on. So when I came to Prague College and I like heard all those business terms, I was totally lost. So uh, in that case, they actually put me to this foundation year where they prepare you for everything. They teach you about those business terms and so on. And then after that, I went actually to the proper um, bachelor program. So for me, it was like this. I would say I had similar experiences, as Caroline, because I went to international high school uh, like for four years. And if I didn't study in English and I, didn't, I wasn't in a multicultural environment, I think that would be weird rather than the opposite. So yeah, it was uh, simple and yeah, the tempo of the class is slow as Mirna mentioned, so it's nice. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Like, um, I think, I remember back when I was in high school, I, 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 I went to a Czech state school for six years and then I went to an international high school. And I remember back then it was also a huge jump for me because suddenly I would learn all, for example, if I would have science classes like chemistry, I would learn all the scientific terms in English and I'll be like, hold up, what, 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 what am I supposed to write down? And I mean, I think my studies prior to studying at college prepared me well, but I think uh, I, I know of my other classmates who study creative media production with me uh they don't they didn't have that and they they i you know when i would talk to them about like how they're coping with it with having all classes uh in english now at uni they were they said that you know they're grateful that in our you know in our, in our classes and in, in our school we really have teachers that again because we're such a small you know school 
in a way and we have small classes where the teachers are able to really uh, explain things into more detail and slower and um, you know explain it um, more than once to someone if they don't understand have individual consultations with them I think that's the huge benefit of going to a private university because you get that uh, individual approach and especially if for example studying in English is new to you and I think that's extremely handy okay now another question is can you sum up your experience in the digital campus overall benefits and experience does anyone want to no. answer that Caroline start <laughs> okay <laughs> So the benefits and experience, I think, I think we kind of all said that so a few things, but if I would like sum it up, I guess one of the benefits, I mean, okay, so let's start with the start. Let's start with the benefits uh, of this experience. Um, surely, you know, recording the, the fact that all classes are being recorded, first of all, for those who, for example, are unable to attend the class, so then they can rewatch it. But also, even if you were present and yet it's, it, it's still recorded, so you can watch it then, you know, back a few days later to refresh your memory, to make more detailed uh, notes and things. That's a huge benefit. I think back before the pandemic started and we had to, we, we were basically, you know, schools were forced to start online classes. No one ever thought of that. You know, you would not record your classes down. You would just have to take the notes uh down quickly if the teacher would speak fast and you would not have this opportunity um so i think definitely the fact that classes are recorded secondly there is certain advantage to being able to study from the comfort of your home obviously um i know that some people unfortunately they maybe not have the best relationships at home or even maybe poor just con internet connection and stuff that can be a disadvantage sometimes of course it can happen that the internet just cuts off and you cannot join the class. So you join five minutes later, but I think again, the teachers are extremely understanding towards that. And um, they don't tell you off if that happens because you know it's, it's just digital stuff and the internet that can do this and it's not your fault. Um, does anyone wanna continue with the- Yeah, actually I think that one of the worst things that I can think of is the internet problem because a lot of the kids have connection problems so you'll just see somebody disappearing from time to time mm -hmm. but the thing that I was really I mean impressed by because back in high school my school didn't um, we had this thing back home where each school high school would have an online week just for the sake of it even before the pandemic but my school never had it and when the pandemic started they had a, a rough time adapting to the online learning but here everything just started right away and everything was functioning and there was a there was like a strategy to how it would be done another crucial benefit I think would be to record the classes and until you have a need for them you never actually know how crucial they are because uh, I can't even remember how many times I've had to go over some things and it was right there so I guess the, uh, the bad thing would be I guess the 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 distance between the students, but everybody's working their best to overcome that. So, I mean, overall, it would be a positive experience. It, it would be a positive experience. It's just that there's always a few bumps and bruises along the way, but everything's going as smoothly as it can. Yeah. I mean, I have a friend who told me she was uh, like homeschooled from a very early age. And when, I, when she told me her experience, she was like, you know, for me, it was a complete normal thing. And then when I came to study university uh, and w went to a campus, like that was super odd to me. But in a way, it was a great experience and I enjoyed it. I think, you know, as for now, even though we see each other's faces on Zoom and stuff, it feels in a way also like you're kind of homeschooled. And um, so, so it's interesting to experience it. But of course, being able to gather in person and stuff is extremely great because you feel connected you don't you, you don't I think people who are you know if you're a natural extrovert like me um being just closed and isolated in your you know in your home where you live and sit just in front of the camera is almost kind of sometimes depressing but I'm extremely grateful again that for our school is having all these online like uh you know clubs and stuff that we can join or like these parties 
So we're not trying, so they're really trying their best not to make it feel like something that's a pain, but that, rather something that we can enjoy. And I think Prague College has done an excellent job with this. Yeah, I agree with everything you said. And I would just add that also another benefit is for the people who actually work in the normal job that I know I had a lot of classmates who had to like go early from the work to attend the class uh, in the university and they like missed many hours like that. So um, with those online classes, they just could have uh, watch, watch it back, uh, just record it. So that, that's really big benefit that you can actually focus more now on your proper work if you, if you actually got to work. And another thing is also, it prepares you a lot for this future digital era and communication online, which probably is gonna happen in the future and it will be more and more of those like online meetings and online presentations and everything is moving kind of more to the digital. So um, I think those this digital campus is actually preparing us for this also. And another thing is, if we will be able to travel in future, um, also you don't have to come back just for just for the class and you can stay where you are and just attend the class online from there, wherever you go. So those are the other benefits I would add to this. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I, I imagine that in the future, universities wouldn't even be like on physical campuses because it's so much easier, like you need less resources and less, um, money in short to, you know, teach. So I think, yeah, it really prepares us for the future. <laughs> One of the biggest benefits I would say is that I can attend classes in my pajamas and I can sleep in longer. <laughs> so for lazy people, maybe. <laughs> this Absolutely. Is very nice. <laughs> I think also um, another advantage is, I mean, you know, if you think of it, the, the, the future of, um, you know, businesses, all, all branches, businesses, media, everything is online. And so being able to really prepare yourself well for, you know, having like business meetings, you know, sometimes are held, you know, online. Uh, or I know, I'm sure Veronica knows it because, you know, she's, she's pursuing this uh, career path. Or, you know, me who I'm, I'm, you know, striving to pursue uh, more like uh, humanities and film studies and branding and advertising. Um, again, you know, I think, I think it is going to come, like, it is going to result in a useful skill for us to be able to communicate. Because again, if you think of it, now we see on the screen just our faces, right? But body language is an insane uh, part of communication that unfortunately right now we lack. And so to be able to express ourselves well and be explicit and execute things well to what we're trying to say, whether it is for presentations or just general general communication, I think we're gonna be able to become even better and better at this. And it's gonna be a useful skill in the future, I think, for sure. So, yeah. Okay, so thank you everybody who was watching this and hopefully you found it interesting and useful. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I hope we will be able to see some of you hopefully in the future on campus as well. And if not, then, <laughs> then on the screens uh, on Zoom. Yes. So, okay, yeah. so thank you and bye. Have a good afternoon. Hopefully you answered all your questions. <laughs> yeah. Yeah.